getting wedded the right way. My name is Olushe Gumukulu. One of the things that, um, that may confuse God's children today is what exactly is a wedding? And at what point is someone, can somebody be said to be, have been wedded? And how should we really get wedded? And that also leads to what exactly constitutes divorce? What exactly constitutes marriage? Uh, on the face value, many look at the law on the society, and that is how they take their cue on marriage. So they, the society have laws, and as soon as they comply with those laws, they believe they are married. And as soon as they also comply with those laws with regards to divorce, they believe that they are divorced. But when you look at the Bible, it's completely different. Before there was a judge, before there were rules, before there were human, there are human rules, lawyers, advocates, and so on, there has been marriage. And those marriage, God recognized them. Marriage is a covenant. It's not a paperwork. In the society today, we are signing paper, we are doing all of those things. Fine. But marriage is a covenant. It's, it's not a paperwork. Before paper was manufactured, before there was ink, there has always been marriage. But then the focus in this video really is on wedding. Because believers have all kinds of understanding about wedding. Some feel that, oh, if you don't have a church wedding, and really there is nothing like a church wedding. There's really nothing like a church wedding. And when you look at the scripture and look at the epistles, you notice that the issue of wedding, they didn't um, bring any doctrine, write on any doctrine with regards to wedding because they have left it to family. They have left it to become things people deal with at family level. Uh, so what a, two believers can go and get wedded in a church building, Okay, they can go and get wedded in a church building. There's nothing wrong with that. But some actually think that that is the marriage, that the wedding that God recognizes. No, that is not. Jesus was at the wedding in Cana. It was, it was not the kind of wedding that we do today. And Jesus was there. And Jesus recognizes that marriage. Jesus gave authority to that marriage. And, yet, and, and so it, it's, a, it's a wedding acceptable before God. Particularly in some part of the world, uh, believers go through different kinds of weddings. When I was going to get married, we went to the registry first, um, and then we did introduction at, at my wife's family, and then we did what we call engagement, you know? That's number three. And then we had a, we, we got wedded in an assembly, that's number four. Then we had to go for a wedding reception, that's number five. And then we went for wedding Thanksgiving, six. All these things cost a lot of money. We don't need all of them. One is okay. That's just the truth. One is okay. What you need in a wedding is two or three witnesses. Wedding can be conducted in people's sitting room. Some believers think that when you go to a court to get wedded, that uh, maybe your, your wedding is not a, a good wedding. Maybe it's not a wedding acceptable before God. Let me say to you, it is acceptable before God. What is important to God is this. Two people want to get married. Keep yourself before, marriage, before that wedding. After that wedding, keep to yourself. That means you can't go outside of marriage to have sex with another person. Those are the things that are essential to God, that are important to him. That as a man, you treat your wife the way Jesus would treat her. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And as a woman, you submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. Those are the crucial things. It's not whether you wore a white dress or you wore a suit or all of those things. That's, that's not all. All of that doesn't matter. We are wasting so much resources and energy. And then some will go through all of this and then end up in divorce. We are, we are spending too much energy on wedding when we should be bringing people up to learn to love one another and build a marriage that glorifies the name of God. There is nothing, there is nothing about it that you have to go through all of this. You don't have to. One is enough. Now, because we live in a legal society, 
you may have you need wedding certificate there's no problem with that okay but the certificate doesn't make your wedding doesn't make your marriage you have that certificate because you are wedded okay for example if me my wife and i we are wedded we have a marriage certificate if you tear that marriage certificate uh today i just want to demonstrate something for us to see you know now let's assume that this that i have in my hand is our wedding certificate and then you tear it okay it's torn that's our wedding certificate brethren my marriage still stands this doesn't make the marriage so even though i have this this is not what make me to be married many people are so carried away by the laws of the society they do not understand marriage from a scriptural perspective marriage is a covenant that's why god said what to what god has joined together you are no more one you are two not by this paper not by what they signed but by a spiritual joining that only god can do marriage is a is a mysterious union but you need this paper because if i'm going to embassy now and they're asking me are you married and i say yes then can we see evidence what will i present so i present the marriage certificate so there's nothing wrong please ensure you get a marriage certificate and you can always get that you can easily walk to a registry and get that but if you choose to just have it at the back of your house it's a wedding in your sitting room it's a wedding a reception it's a wedding you know just ensure at the end of the day you get a marriage certificate because we live in a legal uh, society so that you can tend that but have, understand the back of your mind that it's not that marriage certificate that makes your marriage your marriage is already a union by god in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every matter be established what we do on wedding day is simply to be witnesses it's not the pastor that joins you it's not a judge that joins you in fact what the pastor should say is that i stand as a witness that the two of you have agreed to be joined by god they should not say that i join you they can't join it's a mysterious joining only god can join so it's not your pastor that is joining you it's not the officiating minister that is joining you be clear about these things you know we have traditions that we almost take them to be the word of god that as if oh that is how it has been and we waste a lot of resources people that ordinarily could manage their lives you they have to go through wedding processes that they can't afford and they become indebted and so on and they, there is competition you, you are trying to please people when i see what some people spend on wedding it will actually solve some people's life problem it will start business for them they will be able to feed their families it will pay school fees of several children and they will have brighter future but we just consume all of that in one event of one single day that really doesn't make doesn't make much even for the wedding at Cana, they didn't have sufficient uh drink for for the guests thank god for jesus who was there at that day so don't stress yourself adam and eve became husband and wife there was no ceremony joseph uh took they gave him a wife and there was no ceremony even uh moses there was no ceremony even mary the uh the mother of of the lord and joseph do you know what the angel said to mary it was only be true but the angel said to joseph rather he said go and take mary your wife and that was the end there was no ceremony again and you cannot say that the the, the marriage of the mother of the lord is not a marriage it is a marriage and yet there was no ceremony to that so let's stop all these things let's there's nothing like church wedding you can get wedded in a church building you know because of this we are creating problem for ourselves in the church because church is not a place for sinners the church is an assembly of people who have been saved the church goes into the world to bring sinners when they have been converted then they become the church but look at what we do today we allow anybody to come and wed in our assemblies they may not be born again and so they come they come with all kinds of things and so and then you begin to say oh you don't like their dressing you don't like this they are people of the world what do you expect that's the way they've been dressing you are the one that has brought them into our assembly our assembly should be assembly of the saints it should be a holy place so once you are allowing anybody to come to get wedded in your assembly be ready for that now i'm not saying people can't get wedded in in, in christian assembly but understand that it's 
um, it's not church wedding, it's Christian wedding. That means it's a marriage between two people that are born again, that have given their life to Jesus. That is what is taking place. That can take place in a court. That can take place um, in your sitting room. It can take place at an arena. It can take place in a church settings. It, can, it is the marriage or, or the wedding of two Christians, not church wedding. Please, let's have these things in perspective. And let's not enslave ourselves with all of these things and think that it is all these things that matters. No. You see, we are so interested in wedding that we forget that it's about marriage. That marriage is about the purpose of God. That's what God is setting it to, for. But you focus all your energy on wedding, on the pictures, on all of those things that you want to do, and the wedding clothes and so on. And then you get married, and that marriage is not fulfilling the purpose of God. It is fight, it is argument, it is all of those things. What then is the essence of all of that? We should focus more on the real goal of marriage, on the real purpose of marriage. It doesn't matter. It's, some say, well, he has not paid my bride price, so we are not married. It's not bride price that makes marriage. I'm going to leave a link. I'm going to leave a link uh, in the description below where I have explained about lobola or bride price or um whatever it is called in different uh settings i'm going to leave a link where you can watch it you know those are not the things what is important is having two or more witnesses the two people knowing that they are getting wedded all right i'm going to leave a link so you can actually watch it and understand uh understand that so please wedding is a simple process it is a simple event. I'm also going to leave a link on divorce so that you understand marriage better. Okay? Because if you don't understand marriage, you won't also understand divorce. But please, let's not waste money on things that are not essential. Let's not stress ourselves doing several weddings. One is enough. God bless you, brethren. My name is Olushe Gumoku Olu. If you have questions or you want to discuss anything with me, my phone number and email address, they will be in the description below. I'm also going to leave links to several, uh, some videos rather, that uh, may help your understanding better. I'm going to leave them in the description below. You can share this message with other believers, and you may consider subscribing to this channel. God bless you.